Hello, brothers and sisters. Um, well, I'm here again with a heavy heart. Um, it seems like every day I just... I see more things that need prayer because I know Jesus is coming soon. And I know that the other day, the other night I was laying in my bed, I told this in my last video, and there's a friend of mine whom I was like a sister to me. I met her when she was four years old. I haven't talked to her for almost six years, five years, a little over five years. It would be six years in June of next year that we've been not talked to each other. Anyway, the other night I was laying in my bed and all of a sudden an overwhelming sadness came over me that I needed to pray for her, so I did. And I cried out to God. And I don't know what I cried out because it's from my heart, not my mind to remember, but last night as I went to sleep, I believe that when you have dream of fire and destruction, it's judgment coming. And um, for some reason, 444 is coming to my head. And I think 444 is judgment, if I'm not mistaken. But I'm not sure. Okay, because some people say 11 is judgment, so I don't know. But anyway, um, last night as I, in my dreams, I saw, I was like driving through a town and people were getting in the vehicle where I was at or getting in something. We were all getting together out of these buildings that were blowing up. And I kind of take the meaning of that being as if the world is getting ready to see judgment like never before. Uh, I personally believe that um, the Gentiles have their time right now. That's anyone who is not Jewish. And once you become to the Lord and become a child of God through Jesus Christ, you are a Jewish. You are adopted by the blood of Jesus Christ, a Jewish carpenter. But if you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you go to church every Sunday, but you have yet to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you are not of God. Because God sent His Son to pay that sin debt that you could never pay on your best day. Because on your best day, your best is dirty, filthy rags. Because without Jesus Christ in your heart and the blood atonement of his blood, spotless, the lamb's spotless blood, you are just a man on earth who is living to go to hell. You have got to ask Jesus in your heart. He is the way, the truth, the life. There is no other way to the Father but to the Son. Now that's, take it or leave it, that's the truth, that's the word of God. And in this dream, I feel like judgment is coming. Um, I almost felt like... Um, because there is a few tall buildings in my old home town uh, or city and I felt like that's where I was at gathering people but it, it would be something in my dreams I'd be somewhere I remember but it could have been New York City I've never been to New York but it could be it could have been I don't know I just know that buildings were burning up and it was starting at the top the fire was at the top of them you know what I'm saying like the top the very top of the destructions coming the very beginning. The top of the building, technically, when you're looking down from heaven, the top will be the beginning and the bottom will be the end. So, I look at it that way. I also uh, wanted to say, you know, in, in, on Saturday, or su Saturday, I think it was, yes, sat Sunday, no, it was Sunday, when I prayed for my, my sister, well, like a sister to me, I just felt the over overwhelming sensation that I needed to pray for her. And it was hard. Because I had to pray hard for her. I mean, I literally rolled over and cried out to God God I want you to do that more I'm asking before my brothers and sisters give me the ability to cry out to you even more God that feeling was powerful and I want it again I want it more I want it stronger God I'm asking before my brothers and sisters give me that ability in Jesus name I want to do more for you Lord I want you to empty me and me and fill me with you Lord Jesus please and I ask this in Jesus name Amen I know I have people coming against me on here they can put thumbs down and you know that just shows me that I'm doing the right thing and uh, I'm not crying because of that I could care less because they have to answer to God I just pray that they hear the word of God or the conviction from God in their inside their hearts that they hear that still small voice but for some it's already too late they've been turned over to a reprobate mind or a hardened heart something pretty sad happened to me today yesterday I posted on uh, Facebook a, a post about Joyce Myers because those of you who may listen to her need to know that she is a false prophet she is not a teaching from God's Word because she teaches heresy and lies she teaches lies she's all about improving herself and stuff you know um, like a man said today you know 
that you know in the Bible many times, and I don't agree with that preacher either. He's he's very rude. He says he hates people. You are not supposed to hate the person. You're supposed to hate the sin. So right there, he's wrong. He should be called down upon his hate. I think I think someone actually went off on him about that one time. Now I don't know for sure if they did or not, but I'm thinking they did. But anyway, I just want to ask you guys to please pray. God knows the needs in my heart. God knows what I want. And I'm asking because I want this flesh to be gone. I want to live to Christ completely. I want to just seek His will every day, every way. We all need to. As children of God, we need to quit seeking the things of this world and only seek God. For it is God who's bringing us out of this world. Jesus is coming back soon. I know He is. Yesterday, as me and my cousin was eating dinner, um, I felt while I was waiting for her to fix our sandwiches because we were having sandwiches yesterday and chips and uh, I was waiting for her to fix it and I felt a um, well I could see almost like when the rapture happens and our spirits will leave our bodies I almost could see this, the light of our spirit lifting up and leaving I really could and I want to ask you guys to please pray for my family Please pray for my family. There's some stuff going on in my family. I can't talk to them. Some of them I can't even get in contact to talk to. Because I haven't seen them since before my mom and dad died. I mean, I've talked to one, two of them after mom and dad died. But one started trouble and the other one told me that uh, they were worried about me because... Uh, or they had a friend, mutual friend, which I don't talk to any of them, that is in the homosexual lifestyle, who said they're worried about me because I got in this, got brainwashed by Christianity. Uh, Christ, being a Christian is not being brainwashed being a Christian is being alive and being woken into the body of Christ because when you know the, when you start to learn the Bible you start to see the stuff that shows you that Jesus Christ is coming you know back 2008 before I didn't see anything toward the end times but when I came to the Lord I began to see that times are changing and the end is near and I believe now more than then we are in the very end seconds of, of the um, end age of grace we're getting ready to see the Great Tribulation start. We, we, I don't think we're going to see it. We're seeing the sorrows. Though. I think we're at the end of the beginning of sorrows, and we're getting ready to hear the trumpet blow. And our, our Father in Heaven is going to send our Savior, Jesus Christ, to say, Come up hither. You know, we can't, even, we can't even imagine how wonderful it's going to be. We can't even begin to imagine how beautiful it's going to be when Jesus calls us home. We, ain't going to, we can't even begin to know how beautiful, because no human eye has ever seen Heaven. That's where I have problem with these people saying they had a vision, they were in heaven, and, and, and they saw this and that. Jesse DePlantis, which is a false teacher, and, and there was a few other teachers that said that God talked to them just like they, like a best friend, you know, God would say, well, no, you don't need to do it. Well, you, you sure I don't need to do that? God is not going to have a conversation with you. God doesn't have to ask you, you know, I don't think you should do it. God's going to say, no, don't do that. Jesse DePlantis may look like he, that he sees God. You know, Jesus said, greater is he that sees that." You know, greater is faith of he that never, and I know I'm paraphrasing this, greater is the faith of he who has never seen and yet believes than those who have seen and believe. You know, we haven't seen Jesus. I've seen, like, shadow figurements, like, you know, like in my, in my hallway I saw a man who I, t I perceived to be Jesus because he looked like our Savior. Now, in the vision, he did have, like, hair down to his shoulders, which... I want to think that God doesn't have long hair because of where he says that, you know, long hair on a man is disgust. But you got to think, they are neither male nor female. So, you know, God is not male or female. He's the Father in heaven, but there is no sexual, sexual uh, identification because there's no sex. It's all, we're all one. We're the body of Christ. And here on earth, we're male or female. But in heaven, there will be no male or female. You'll be known as you were known. You will have, if you were a woman here on earth, I believe you'll be a female shadow, a female figure in, in heaven. But there's no going to the bathroom. There's no need for marriage because there's no need for sex because the spirit only... Ling the only thing our spiritual being needs is Jesus Christ. And the reason why God made marriage here on this earth was so that man could stay clean by being only with one person. And which, you know, it's... A lot of people have made... You know, they have made mistakes and got married and stuff. And do I believe that God forgives those who remarry? Yeah, I do. I do believe it. But the thing I see in, in, in my heart, I feel like if you divorce, in your flesh, your, your flesh is still sin. It's your soul that has been forgiven. Your flesh is still going to go back to the earth where it came from because no flesh enters in. No earthly flesh will enter into heaven. This earthly flesh couldn't handle heaven at all. We're going to be 
total new, just like Jesus. And I hope people understand what I'm saying. I had posted something about Joyce Myers yesterday on Facebook and um, about the fact she's a false teacher. So is Paula White. So is uh, Marilyn Hickey and, and, and all them. I, I meant Kenneth Copeland, Joyce, Joyce Myers. I call her Joyce Liars. T.D. Fakes, which is T.D. Jakes. Uh, I think it's Eddie Pat, Bishop Eddie Money or something like that. You know, uh, uh, the Crouches off from TBN. Those are all false leaders, which the Bible tells us would be and has been since, you know, they started preaching the gospel. The Pharisees and Sadducees were false leaders because they wanted people to do as they say and not what they do. You know, as a leader of, the, uh, of a flock, the, she the shepherd of the flock is supposed to lead them into the word. You know, the reason why I feel they call it the pastor of a church. Well, really, the person isn't a pastor. The pastor is the church where the flock gathers together to be fed. And then the preacher pre-reaches with the word to feed the flock of the word. And a lot of these preachers are not they are preaching a form of, a form of godliness, but they turn it around and make it their own way. To where people feel if they don't give money or plant a seed, that you know, they're gonna, they're, they don't have faith. Uh, you're not healed because you don't have faith. You know what? That's all a lie from the pits of hell. When by his stripes we are healed means we are healed from our sins. Does God still heal today? Yes, he still heals today. But some people's sicknesses is, is to glorify God. I have things going on in my own body that, I mean, I have aches and pains and I have things I don't understand. You know what I'm saying? But I continue going every day to glorify God. I don't care this flesh is going to go back to the earth. But my soul is going to live on with God in heaven. Yesterday on, on Facebook, one of my friends, well, an acquaintance that lives near me, I can't say they're friends because they never come around, but they put on there on a comment that I needed to take the plank out of my own eye before I tried to take the speck out of someone else's talking about Joyce Myers. And I believe they watched a video and they seen where she was married twice. And they've been married, you know, more than once. And I'm like thinking, you know, if you think you're, you're totally sin-free, you're wrong. You are not sin-free. We are all old sinners saved by grace. These bodies are still sinful. That's why it says live to the soul and not you know, to the spirit, to your soul that is sealed by Christ instead of living to the flesh because the flesh wants the desire of sin. Because this fleshly body, this earthly being, building is built for, it was built originally to serve God, but the devil took over when he, when he deceived Eve. And this is something people need to realize too when it came to the Garden of Eden. You know, Adam wasn't one deceived. It was Eve that was deceived. And in return, she, she, did she deceive Adam? Or did Adam love her so much that he didn't want to see her destroyed and he ate the fruit too? And again, it's not an apple. It's forbidden fruit. Forbidden means it's not here no more on earth. You know, Jesus is coming now and I had to block this woman and I did like some of her posters. But when someone comes on there and, and they're going to... And I even took her husband off, my, off mine too. I mean, I don't get a good vibe from her husband for some reason. I used to, but there, there was a picture of him on there and just, there was something that didn't feel right. You know what I'm saying? Something did not feel right. And I believe some people, I do, I do believe she's a child of God, I believe he is too. You know, they say they are, I, who am I to judge? I can't judge if they are or not. But when you come against somebody about something they're putting on her that's true, and you know because what Joyce Myers goes against the word of God, and many teachers have come and shown that she does, like she moves um, punctuations in the word to make the word mean something different than what it does. And that right there is wrong. You know, you can't... You can't just up and move punctuations where you want them in the Word. They've got to be where God puts them. God's Word is a Word that is, is not, it's not changing. It's not changeable. It is what it is. It's just like people saying, well, you know, in today's world, it's all right for a woman to be over a church. The Bible says no. The Bible says no. No. You know? And I'm not being sexist. I'm not being prejudiced. I'm not being racist against women or nobody. I'm just being truthful with you. The Bible says no. And I have seen there's a lot of women that agree. Now, can a woman uh, do prophecy? Yes. Because Noah's sister was a prophetess. Okay? And do I think women can have YouTube channels? Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. I have a doll and sister. I, I always put her out there. Thumbs up to Sherry Lynn. She has got one of the most sweet, smoky voices, and I love that woman, you know? And I can't wait to see my sissy on the streets of gold. I can't wait to see my sister Crystal on the streets of gold. I can't wait to see Sister Mandolin. These are people that are bringing forth the word as God gives it to them. Are they over a church? No. They run a channel. 
and people just people choose whether they want to listen to them or not. They're not over man. They're there to give you comforting words. There's a difference. Just like me. I'm not over you either. I'm just a brother in Christ that comes on here to give you a word of hope, uplifting you know your 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 spirit and and letting you know that Jesus loves you. He's watching out for you. I seen a a post on Facebook this morning. It said no hole was too big that Jesus can't reach down and pull you out. And that's true. And I feel bad because I unfriended that girl on Facebook and her husband. But you know, I can't help it. I don't. They made a you know she could have PM me. And said something instead of putting on her. Because my page on Facebook is not a debate page and it's not a war zone. I had a woman one time, I was, um, and I still believe when it comes to uh, certain people that they do things to be known for. Okay, like back about a couple months ago or something, or quite a few months ago, they had that woman in Kentucky that, you know, denied same sex marriages. You know, good, praise God. I'm glad she did because it's not of God. It is Sodomitry is a sin. That's why Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. In Noah's time, it was destroyed from the overgrowth of sin. And some of that sin was homosexual. From what I understand, most of it was homosexual. And I praise God. And I, I do believe that God's judgment is getting reported down upon this. So I think it already is in some forms. And I believe, well, one place that really gets it is Oklahoma. And uh, Chile. And, and, and Hades. And, and China. And stuff. They're always having earthquakes and stuff. The other night I watched a video from Jason A. You got to watch watching his though, because sometimes there's some cuss words slip out. But he had a video on there the other day, and I, I love watching his videos. Um, but I don't like when I have cuss, and I, if I hear a cuss word, I stop watching, because I don't like it. I once was a filthy mouth person, and I don't ever want to be again. Thank you, Jesus, for taking that desire, and I plead the blood of Jesus over me right now in Jesus' name, Amen. In this video, there was sounds, and it sounded like trumpets. Okay. I do believe those are the trumpets. They've been sounding for, well, let's see. I've known about them since about, um, I think they started back like in 2008 or something. You know, and there's been quite a few times, or, or 2000, I know 2011, 2012, I know they started. One of them's the last trump, and we're getting ready to go home. And I believe it's up to it, because it, they've been a lot sounding. Our knowledge of the Bible and the Word of God and, and, the, and, and the trumpet is not God's knowledge. God's Word and God's, God's mind, God's, God's mindset, it, it, human cannot get it. You won't get it. Because it, it, it what if the trumpets are several blows for one call? You know, think about in the army when they do the rally call in the morning. There's several blows, but that's one call in the morning. So you see what I'm saying? We don't know if it could be several calls. And they all add up to seven, you know, because there's seven trumpets. But I do believe the last trumpet is getting ready to sound, and we're getting ready to go home. I do believe that we're getting ready to see some stuff. I'm sorry, my heating pad, I'm trying to get it behind my neck. Um, I do believe we're getting ready to see some stuff change. I want to ask you all to please pray for uh, a sister in Christ named Glennis. Uh, she got a call from her son yesterday, and her brother has terminal cancer. And um, she found out yesterday that uh, her, his son wants things made right between them because they've had some differences. Any family, there's always a, someone in the family squabbles and they don't talk to each other. That's in, well, in most families. In my family, I mean, I love all my family, but in my immediate family, my older brother and I do not talk because of his life ch choosing, but I still love him and I still pray for him because I want to see him get his, right, his life right with Christ. Well, this brother is her oldest brother, and I think it's her oldest brother. And he is dying of cancer. And they've already took off the chemotherapy from him and, and, and everything, and they're, they're calling hospice into his house to take care of him for his remaining days. And his son wants her to make, make amends, them to make amends of what happened. And just pray that God will give her the words to speak to him and that God will give her the words to truly follow him and not, not, not the things of this world. I, you know, I worry about my, my friends that I know up close and personal. I mean, I have a lot of friends that I know that are, um, well, I have a lot of friends that I know are, um, basically, they're, um, they're all precious to me. Let's just put it that way. I think that's the best way to put it. 
brothers and sisters, God knows my heart. Would you please pray that God's will be done in my life? I want to be able to seek Him with my whole heart. I don't want anything worldly in my life. <coughs> and I want to pray for those who do have worldly stuff in their life. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, I just feel like we need to... i got allergies getting me. Uh, I just want to pray that we can understand God's calling for our lives and do what God wants us to do. We don't need to be trying to um, make... Um, hold on a second. Okay, I had to get a drink because that was really getting bad. Allergies are bad, bad, bad things. They're bad thingies, but that's okay. Anyway, I want God to use me to draw those who need Him. I know that the time is running out. We're running low on, on the time before Christ returns, and I know that we're going to see the Lord return soon. We just need to stay strong. Excuse me. <coughs> I know that was coming. It always does. I have at least like two or three of them when I start. So... <laughs> um, I'm not going to stay on here much longer as I don't want to be sitting there sneezing in your face. Um, not that you'll catch a cold. It's on the computer. If you catch it, you got some really strong internet. That's all I can say. But anyway, just keep us in your prayer. You're in ours. I pray for all of my YouTube subscribers and my friends on Facebook. Continue to look up. Jesus is coming. Your redemption draweth nigh. It could be at any moment. Any moment Jesus could come. Pray for those around you that you know are lukewarm and pray for those who do not know the Lord. Pray for those who play church. It's not about a building. It's about a relationship with Jesus Christ. Your true Christianity, your true walk in faith is in your own home. And when you're out in public, the way you carry yourself, the way you allow yourself to be seen by others. Because others are seeing Christ in you when you're walking, when you're talking, when you're interacting with people. That's where you show Christ. I saw a preacher, like I said today on Facebook, who was... Very rude. Very rude, saying he hated people. As a child of God, we don't hate anybody. We can't hate God. There's no hate in God. Only hate in God is for sin. He says, love the sin or hate the sin. This preacher, anyone who's following him, needs to leave because he's hating people. He said, I hate them sodomites. You can hate the sodomitry life, but you cannot hate the sodomite people because they are living a life that they have been blinded to. And him being a pastor he should have compassion I totally disagree with the way he comes at people and I know his name's Andrew something I don't know his name not Andrew Womack though it's Andrew something he's not really a popular I think he's more popular on YouTube than anywhere but um, and then he's come out of heat before because of the way he does but if you don't feel right about somebody then you know what and if it goes against the word of God and hating something one hating a person comes against God God says hate the sin not the sinner you gotta love the sinner and hate the sin and brothers and sisters, we're living in very perilous times. Every day there's more killing and more stuff going wrong. And you know, here lately I've been seeing a lot of people, like in the last four or five years, all of a sudden, everybody's coming out against Christmas. I personally don't do Christmas because I felt God convicted me of the Christmas tree. I think once you know something, if you do it, it's a sin. And I did sin once and do it, and I'm, God forgive me for that. Please, in Jesus' name. In Jeremiah chapter... And if you don't want to hear this, please turn it off. Turn the video off right now, because I'm telling you. In Jeremiah chapter 10, it talks about the heathens. Don't do as the heathen do, and go to the forest and chop a tree down, and, and nail it to the floor, and decorate it with silver and gold. That's a Christmas tree. God does not like the tree. The tree becomes an idol at Christmas time, along with Satan Claus. I had a, a lady on Facebook, which I'm still friends with, but I don't follow her anymore. Because she had her Christmas tree up even before Thanksgiving. There's a difference in, in, in loving a season or a holiday and loving the reason for it. And if you ask me, I really truly don't think there's any any. Christ in Christmas when you go out and see people want to rip each other's head off the day after they're given thanks. I, people saying keep Christ in Christmas. I don't believe Christ is in Christmas. 
my, my cousin said her church taught about, you know, the, the Christmas and everything. Well, each person has their own belief, and, and I'm not down in theirs, but I'm sorry. Studies show from the Greek and from any other place that December the 25th, which is the, you know, winter solstice, it's the, it's the day of the year when the night is longest. Of all nights, it's the longest. And it's also, if you think of light being long, night, darkness is evil, okay, and it's longer, which means longer evil in that time of year. And God is not in the dark. God is the light. Jesus is the sun, the S-O-N. A lot of people worship the S-U-N. They say that the sun in the sky that God created is at it's at it's getting it's getting recharged or something at that time the winter solstice. But from what I understand, there are several different false gods, little G's, that are born on that day. You know, before you go celebrating, take it before the not before your pastor. Your preacher at church is just a man. Don't take it to him. Take it to God. Because if it goes against the word of God, and the word of God is the same yesterday and forever, how can you, how can you go against the word of God when the word of God says, do not do as the heathen do? Oh, that's the Old Testament, Cecil. No. The Bible is the Bible. The word of God, God says, my word will remain the same. Heaven and earth may pass away, but my word by no means will pass away. Jesus is the word that became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus never changes. And I don't remember the disciples or any of the you know, New Testament writers not one time talking about, well, it's that time of year again. Let us decorate a tree and go buy gifts for people. You know, Jesus didn't spend money. He spent life. He went and gave his life so that we could have life for eternity with him. At this season at Christmas time, people are going out and they're just going in debt and they get they're bitter all year round because they're having to pay the bills they ran up at Christmas time where is that Christ like what do you think God wants you to be bitter all year round just because you feel good one day a year giving gifts to people if it was truly a Christ wouldn't God want us to give it from our heart not our wallet this is just the things that I feel Thanksgiving to me and people say Thanksgiving's pagan I think that depends on how you do it because with me Thanksgiving Day or that evening we had dinner and I got to talk about the Lord to two of my friends that I one goes to church but I feel like he's he doesn't get much from it because he's 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 like um, he's got a childlike mentality and the other friend she was Catholic at one time and she told me she gets more from what I tell her about the Bible than she ever did in Catholicism Catholicism which I told her I said the Catholics are not teaching from the Word of God they're another man-made religion, another cult. The Roman Catholics are cults. So is Jehovah's Witnesses. So are Mormons. So are Seventh-day Adventists. But you know, you got to wonder something. You know, I, a lot of people are coming against Sunday worship. Okay, now Jesus came that the Sabbath would be done away with. Okay, and this is one thing I stand on. I, I don't think we should put a day for worshiping Jesus. I think we should worship Him every day. Our congregation on Sunday. You know, back in Jesus' day, there wasn't really, I don't think there was labels of days. I think the days come, I don't know, maybe they were. But the Sabbath is Friday at sundown to Saturday at sundown. That's the time that, you know, the Jewish people worship. But that's a Jewish tradition. I think now that Jesus came, he did away, he said, you know, he did away with the Sabbath. Not that we should, that, but, well, let me get this out right. We should worship God daily, not just one day, every day. Back then, they didn't have a Bible in their home. They had to come to the synagogue to hear the Word of God. Now we have the right to have, well, they're trying to take it right from us, but we have a right to have the Bible in our house, so every day should be the Sabbath. Every day. You should take time, not just a 24-hour period, but take an hour or, or two a day. I, my whole day goes to God. No matter what I'm doing, I want to do it to the glory of God. So, but what I'm saying, you know, we need to worship the Lord all the time. When you seek Him, you're going to see His will and you're going to see the signs of His soon return. And it is at the door, brothers and sisters. It is at the door. I hope the things I've said in this video help somebody, but also I want to ask you all to please pray for a many unspoken prayer requests I have in my heart right now. I don't know all of them because they've been in there for so long. There's a few that 
I've, I've paid people from from my past that I know needs the Lord. And um, I'm just asking you all to please pray for them. I love you all, and I know that soon, very soon, we're going to hear that trumpet sound, and we're going home. And again, to the one that is putting the thumbs down, God loves you. He really does. You're allowing the enemy to use you. And it's got you on a road to hell. You keep bringing up my past, but my past has been forgiven by God. You keep going to that address that I no longer live at. I don't live in the past no more. That one, that person, when I came to God, behold, all things become new. Behold, all things pa old, all things pass away, and all things become new. I'm a new man in the Lord. I don't want anything to do with the old me. You know, brothers and sisters, when I think about the person I was, it terrifies me. Because I know I was going to split hell wide open. I know I was going to split hell wide open. Because I was believing the lot Satan put in my head that I was born that way, and that was not true. And there's many people out there that want to say, oh, you know, I was born that way. No, you wasn't. No, you wasn't. That's the lie from Satan, the lie from the pits of hell. You need to come to God and let him open up your heart. You're going to a church that's run by man and not by God. A true church of God's going to tell you they're going to stand up in the Word. They ain't going to compromise in nothing. They're going to stand up on the Word of God. They ain't going to tell you it's okay just to get your, your, their seats full, their pockets full. true man of God trusts God to give them their needs. And God tells us He'll meet our needs by His riches and glory. We can never outgive God. Don't, you know, you go out there pouring money into some human's pocket in their bank account thinking, well, I'm going to be rich, I'm going to be rich. And every, every time you give them money, you just seem to see you're staying right where you're at. You never went over it. Well, you know what? If you give your heart truly to God, the God of heaven, he sees that even a little bit of money goes a long ways. I'm going to tell you guys something. Back, in, back about uh, 2009, I had... Um, I was making like over $1,500 a month, okay, myself. And I had a hard time making ends meet because of my, my devilish lifestyle and wanting to do pot, smoke pot and drink and stay drunk and buzz all the time. You know, now I'm, I make way under, I'm, I make under 1500 I barely make, I make just a little over 1000 now a month, okay? And I'm telling you, praise God, what money we get, God has supplied our needs by His riches and glory. Yesterday, my cousin said that she prayed before she went in the store for me. I had her get some groceries to do us because we didn't get everything we needed. I got more for the dinner for my friends, and I gave them some stuff, you know, that, um, that I needed. Uh, that, that they needed, I mean. I gave them some groceries because they were having financial difficulties, and I gave them some food. And... Uh, because I want to see them to be able to be comfortable. I don't want them sitting there worrying about where they're going to eat, you know. If I can supply something, I'm going to help somebody to keep that part. Because God keeps me calm. There's things that bother me, but I know I have to get... That's the time I need to give them to God. I need to say, God, you got to take this. I can't handle it. And God takes it in Jesus' name. My cousin said before she went to the store yesterday, she prayed that I would have enough money. And, you know, she had it all added up that I was almost like $16 from being back broke again, Okay. You know what? She came out. I still had 40 bucks left after she did all my grocery shopping. Yeah. Yeah, because God makes things stretch when you trust in Him. She said, I should have prayed over mine too because she said, I spent more than you and I didn't get near as much as you did. God's showing His... God's showing His, his love for us in many ways. I went to the store with just a little bit of money. I didn't know how I was going to do what I did, you know. I got my groceries... I think I went to the store, I had like 80 bucks one time, and I went to the store, and I had almost a cart full of groceries, and checked out. Well, not a cart full, but you know, half, but probably about two weeks worth of stuff, you know, to fill in. It was 60 some dollars, that was it. God works miracles. And if you put your trust and faith in God, with your finances, with your life, with your health, God's going to see you through it. He's not going to give you what you don't have need of. Like, you know, it used to be I wanted money all the time.
because I wanted to keep up with it. Well, as my mom would say, keep up with the Joneses. You know, if your neighbor had something, you had to get something better to top them. Well, now I could care less what my neighbors have. If my neighbor had, gets a brand new big screen TV, you know, that's you. I had one. I sent it back. I didn't want it. Um, I had, a, not that I'm, I'm, I'm not boasting about this. I'm just telling you how I am. I had went and paid over $1,000 a couple of years ago in income tax time and bought a, a, a sectional couch only to give it away a year later. Yeah, not a dime. I gave it away. I did not ask for a penny. I gave it away. Because I got, it was just too much in my house. I didn't want it. My kitchen table was an old table that was given to me four years ago with mixed match chairs. I went and bought like secretary chairs, you know, just to put around it. And I'm, actually I've got two at it. I've got one in my bedroom, one's broke that's in my bedroom, the back of it broke. And then I have my big dish chair and a folded chair over by my table. It's mixed match. Do you know what? I'm more happy with mixed match furniture than I ever have been with. I don't, I don't need things in this world. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm happy with my car I have. It's, it's a 2002 Chevy Blazer, but I know that my aunt needs one. And if I could, I, ju I would just give it to her, but she ain't going to let me give it to her. And she ain't going to let me do that. She will not let me do that. But I would. I'd give it to her. Because I know God will make a way for me to have another one if it's His will. If we're still here, Lord willing, which I really doubt we will be, tax season time, I paid over $4,000 for this vehicle. And I'm just getting ready to finish paying it off in February. It'll be the last payment made on it. And um, it's almost identical to my aunt's. And she wants it because she knows it's a good vehicle. And I'm going to go back to the car lot where I deal with it. I know God does me good through them because I trust them. And I trust God more than I do them. I trust God to give me what. And I feel that God gives me what I'm supposed to have. Sometimes what I have is just to give, to, to get, you know, to give that gift to someone else, like the sectional, like I feel the blazer is. You know, I had a van before that, and I, I sold it for hardly nothing. I give over three thousand five hundred or some for it, and I sold it for like four hundred. So you know, I almost four thousand dollars I paid for it. But um, you know. Um, I just know that I have to be, I just want the Lord's will to be done in my life. You know, there's things I want to do with when I have extra money I want to do, but I never get to do them. And I guess it's because it's not God's will for me to do them. There's one thing I want to do and I want to help, that's help our local food pantry or food bank with money to be able to help the, the, the starving people in our in our little county, our little, our little area, you know. A lot of people are, they don't have jobs and they're barely making it and, and, and they have children that need to eat. They have a backpack thing here in, in, in um, the county I live in where they do for children. I think like every other weekend they put together a backpack for us so the kids have enough food to do them over the weekend. Because the parents don't have money to buy food. I help anybody I can. Because that's what God wants us to do. We need to have a giving heart. Not just once a year, but all year round. Because people need love and need compassion and need help every day of the year. Not just the 25th of December. We should celebrate the birth of giving. The birth of Jesus Christ, which is giving. God, Jesus gave of himself so that we have life. God wants us to give of ourselves to people that we may be able to help them to see God in us. With that being said, I love you all. Keep looking up. Your redemption draweth nigh. I love you, but Jesus loves you more. God bless you. Sorry for such a long video, but I have to give out what I feel I have to give out. See you soon with Jesus. Keep looking up. Jesus is coming. Bye.